Welcome back to Pages into the Past. So this week, we're gonna work on a big project. This is a set of Obi-Wan Kenobi costume. So it's going to consist of the outer robe, the inner robe, and a turtleneck, possibly a belt. Uh, there's some different things on the belt, whether we 3D print them or not. Then after this, I'm going to make myself a set of Star Wars Jocasta New Librarian outfit. I've been wanting to do this outfit for my husband for a very long time. And at this point in time, it's it's now time. So there is a gal out of France. Her name is Julie Chantal. And this pattern is juliechantal.com. I got it off of Etsy. And I took it down to my print shop and had it printed. And holy moly, was that expensive. The three different patterns cost me $80 to print. Was it worth it? Well, it would have been, let's see, 27, 68, 64, and eight pages, plus 12, 14, 11, and 10. And 159 printed pages of the standard US copy paper. And then it probably would have taken two full days to tape it all together at different times. And then I would still have had to lengthen it uh, because this pattern is designed for somebody who's five foot ten and my husband is six foot five. So yeah, we had to lengthen it there. So was it worth it? I'm not sure. This is a big pattern. I would think that some of the smaller patterns that we print out, it would be worth it because the one sheet was seven, seven or eight dollars per sheet. And it was pretty good size. And I think I could probably do two sheets if I was using a truly Victorian, might be only two sheets. And so it would have cost, you know, 10 to $15 to print. Still more than if I had had them print it and ship it. But yeah, I don't know how I feel about that yet. But, so we have two ways of doing this outfit right now. Way one is using this pattern that I have paid money to print out. And then there is way number two, which is a Pinterest save, and I printed it out. The difference on the two of them would be length, possibly a little bit of width, not a huge amount. And then the, uh, the only other major is this pattern here has you sh sew the shoulders together and have a shoulder seam. This pattern has you do it on the fold and draft out your pattern with your arms and all of that. And so technically, you only have one, one back seam and two side and underarm seams. As much as that one calls my name, I don't know, don't know if I can manage it in the space that I have. So therein lies my struggle. So I laid this out and I thought, well, what if I just did the, put this on the fold here for this shoulder seam and cut it out and then just add the sleeves. Again, do I or don't I? And maybe what I'll do is I'll get the sleeve pattern and lay it out and see about what it looks like drafting it together that way and see what it looks like. I'm very conflicted at the moment. So I'm gonna, I think that's what I'll do is I'll lay out the sleeve as they show it on this paper where it's half sleeve so that the sleeve is also on the fold. What they do different is this one here has a shoulder tuck to bring the sleeve in to sit on the shoulder better. It's about a five inch tuck right here. And then they sew all of this, but this tuck, this shoulder tuck kind of runs down the side and blends into the side seam about 10 inches above the bottom level. Most of it you won't see if your front is folded open, like in this photo. The front is open. You have the big hood. The front is open. You won't see the pleat, but then again, you don't see the shoulder seam. So therein lies my struggle, because if I just cut this pattern on the fold and then I just add my sleeves in, the only seam you're gonna see is the shoulder of the sleeve seam. Whereas this one, you don't see any seams except for center back and the side seam. Dilemma, 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 dilemma. Ding, 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 ding. All right, well, I gotta think about that. Once it's cut, it's gonna go together really quick because it's just a, a robe, it just, sew up the two seam and bing bang boom done. Well, more than two seams, but yes, it, it'll go super simple. Throw it on the serger and you're 90% done. All right, I gotta go think about this. Okay, because I know you guys are all dying to know what my decision was, kind of did both. What I did is I laid out the pattern on the fabric, traced out most of it, 
up to about here. Then I laid the, the pattern for the sleeve, folded it in half and laid it out. And when I measured it, it was like seven inches short compared to the measurements that I thought I was going to need. Because from the side of the neck to my husband's middle finger is 37 inches, and this was at like 32. And that's without any kind of hem. So I went ahead and added for hems, and if we need a tuck, we can always add a tuck up here in the shoulder, kind of just blend it smooth. Figured since I used, paid for the printing of that pattern, I should probably use it. And so I traced around about 90% of it until I got up to the sleeve, and then I just kind of blended that corner there and added the sleeve pattern I had. Now all I have to do is serge it all together, which shouldn't be too hard. It's pretty much the front seam as a, not even a seam. So the back seam, the underarm and side seam, and then the front will need to be like a one inch hem, I think, or one inch fold. And then I have to also add the hood. The hem, we're gonna wait to see on the length. There are some suggestions about having it a little bit more ratty as well used. Or do we go ahead and do a full small hem at the bottom? Since most of the time we're gonna be wearing this indoors and it might make it last longer haven't decided. I'll probably wait to decide that till after I have him try it on and see how much of a hem either A I will have to make or cut off before I hem because I did extend it I think four inches just for that purpose. So okay next shot it should be pretty much sewn up with the exception of the hood. All right guys, so remember when you're putting this together that you don't want to sew your front and your back closed. Just pin your back, stitch your back, because then you want it open. Then what you're going to do is you're going to stitch your side seams and your sleeves all in one stitch. And then you'll want to make sure you leave your front open because you know, it's a robe. Just remind yourself not to stitch at all, only the back. And on this particular pattern, it's either front or back. They're universal, so I'm just gonna stitch one. I'm gonna throw it on the serger and stitch it. I think at this point in time, if I throw it on the serger, stitch it with a four stitch, it should be good enough and I won't have to do extra stitches. So that's where I'm gonna head off to is I'm gonna use my clips so that I can clip it and throw it through the serger. Okay, so I'm attaching the hood now and what I did is I did a French seam on the hood so that when you see the hood laying open you don't see a seam line and when you're wearing the hood it's just a standard seam and then when it's laying open it's just on the back and it's just a closed seam line, the French seam. And then what I did is I attached it to the neckline and I really didn't have very much adjustments there. So that was great. I didn't have to gather, pleat anything. And now what I'm doing is I'm doing a rolled hem finish. So I've cut down the under the robe. I've cut down that seam allowance. And now what I'm doing is I am rolling the other seam allowance, enclosing it and making it a really tiny seam that almost looks like it could be a French seam, but just with half the amount of bulk. So then I'll hand stitch that. And then what I will end up doing is the front facing and the, the hood facing. What I'll do is as one piece, I will probably give it like a two inch roll and stitch that closed, fold and fold and do that all the way around. And then the last, then what I will do is I'll hem the sleeves. I think I'm going to have to, um, at the shoulder seam or where the shoulder at, I'll probably have to do that five inch pleat so that it folds over like this because the way this pattern is sitting, it looks like the armhole openings are almost at waist level. By doing this like about five inches, it raises that armhole to what I would assume is a more comfortable position. I've been putting it on the mannequin, my male mannequin. So before I do all that, I'll put it on the husband and then see if I need five inches or if five inches is gonna to be too much. It's raining again, yay. But yeah, so that's what we're working on. And uh, all in all, this cloak is really quite easy. So what I ended up doing, and I think I showed this to you, is I just maneuvered the pattern pieces to lay out and cut it as one piece, the sleeves and the front back. By having the pattern piece, I was able to get the curve at the bottom much more uniform and defined than if I had tried to do it by hand. So all in all, I think getting the pattern printed was worth the expense and not having to recreate the wheel. So, 
All right, well, we're gonna get back to sewing or pinning and then sewing. Off we go. So I did take that shoulder tuck um, and I think I took it, well, I tried to take it three inches deep and then when I did it, the shoulder seam was sitting like right off the shoulder. So I pulled it up and folded it backward. And again, I'm so sorry that this is dark fabric, but what I did is I pulled it up to the top of the shoulder just Instead of it hanging this way, I folded it up this way to raise the armpit just a little bit more. So now what I'm doing is I have surged the bottom and the end of the sleeve. And so I need to hem the sleeve so that it fit my husband because it's rather long from the base of his neck to his middle fingers, 35 inches long. And this one uh, from the where the hood attaches is 38 inches. So I think what I'm going to do is a three inch, well, I'm gonna do a four inch hem because I mean, that's the base of your finger. It'll be just slightly longer. If I do a four inch hem, I think that will be fairly good as this will be an outer robe. But yeah, I think I'm gonna do like a four inch hem on the sleeves and then I'm gonna have him try it on so I can figure out how much to take off of the length because it's really quite long. I'm gonna put it on our mannequin that I've padded out somewhat. The shoulders aren't correct, but I'll put it on there so you can kind of see the drape of it. All right, everybody, it's done. Yay, me! Okay, so we have hemmed the bottom. I cut off quite a few inches and put in a two inch hem. You can see some of the markings down there that are still haven't been brushed out. I'll give it a good press here. But you can see there's like a one inch double rolled hem. So two inch hem. In the back, I didn't have to cut off as much. In the front, I think I cut off like four inches after trying it on my husband and having it fitted. I hem the sleeves, the rolled hem up front is about the same as the bottom hem and the back view, very similar to the front because it's all very dark chocolate brown. A hood, same hem. Uh, you can see my mannequin is on a rolling platform because much easier to move him than to have to take him apart. It does make it difficult to put things on because he is so darn tall. But he is the height of my husband, which comes in fairly handy. He's just not as broad as my husband, so I do have him padded out. If you're ever looking for an option of how to do a man and you have a skinny, a skinny mannequin, even for yourself, you can always put padding and a tight shirt over the top. So this is now all done. We're gonna work on the next couple phases. Uh, the next phase is uh, the undershirt for the main portion. It's just a stretch tan shirt. And then we will be working on the robe and obi. Stay tuned and that'll be brought to you soon and keep on sewing. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.